journey of materials back into the back wall, where, which is glass, where, which can be, then be opened. And then you understand hand railings. And you know this is furthest back because you see the dark black shadow casting in the reveal. And then you also tell what's the difference between maybe timber or aluminum louvers as opposed to a screen, maybe to hide air conditioning. But the play with depth is very important when you're doing your elevations. Even something that's not so well drawn, but the idea of just creating where a column is, you know, there's going to be a shadow line. The, the, obviously, the sun is coming from the, from the right-hand side now. And, and then you begin to understand what, the de what depth is. And then you know it's not just a ground floor five-foot way. It's also an upper level five-foot way because you can see people walking up there. Whether it's five or six feet, you can decide that. Change from concrete to timber to steel. Maybe the steel could have been black, but maybe, maybe it's just gray and then it's lightweight because concrete can't be cast so thin maybe for a, 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 a commercial structure. But putting in all the detail that you need to in order to help people understand, this is commercial, Wagamama, Alexis Optical, MPH, all that fiber sec, laundry. What, so, and the, the mix of that also tells you what kind. Wagamama is not the most expensive stuff. Alexis Optical, you look at the font, it doesn't look special. MPH, ordinary bookstore. Five a sec, okay, some dry cleaning. But people with balloons, sight, bicycle, you know, all that stuff makes you understand what life is all about and what life you want to put in. And you see the red dots and they mean nothing. But real life is very messy. So if you just stab a few bits of color inside your elevations, suddenly it just comes alive even though it's just the stupid dots of color, right? So once again, the play of depth, what is light can still be looked like it's behind because of the shadow cast over part of it. What is dark can still come forward because there's no shadow over it unless there's a roof hanging over it. And then you can tell that is behind, further behind the V columns because the V column, the shadow line is further out. You understand the blinds have a bit set back from the edge of the balcony because there's a dark shadow, but there's an even darker shadow behind where there's a uh, a glass, uh, they are timber frame glass doors. Okay, so using color to show the difference between concrete, clay roof tile, plastered wall, and then maybe re a, a, a raw concrete frames with timber on the inside. It's all about understanding what color and how you use your pencil or pen accomplishes what effect you want for you. So the jump to perspectives is not huge. This is basically an elevation with some curves put in, so it looks like a perspective. The real perspective is only in front, where you've got a, 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 a boardwalk, and then you some boats in there, and it suddenly looks like a perspective, even though these were all added in later and they're only lines. But to give that impression that it's actually a full, complete drawing, you don't need to complete the whole drawing, right? Same with this. One side, coded and complete, another side, just a sketch. Important, what is important about all of this is just to focus on what it is you want someone to focus on and drawing in the context only as a line after that so that the attention is not uh, uh, diverted, yes? What else is, is apart from that is not as important as what this is. But you will not understand what this is if you do not have the context added, yeah? So obviously, this is a marina, and these are marina buildings. You see the big flag there with a the big, okay, that's the main marina building, boardwalk leading to it, and then maybe some residences on the side, a bit of a hill. So it gives you a feeling of what it is all about. This is an entrance to a golf a country club when I was doing some really useless projects for GDP. And this is a clubhouse entry, and, and to see that it, it borrows from the colonial style to establish that wonderful plantation feel, long uh, um, 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 verandas and walkways, drop-off area, makes you feel like some rich colonial bastard, right? But the whole idea of just context, and look at these palm trees, they, they mean nothing. But if you take them out, it doesn't feel like a complete perspective. So a perspective is only as good as its context. And when you're doing a, 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 an axon or a perspective, and you need to examine what it's doing in relation to your plan, you just start drawing your plan. So the plan started getting examined first. You can see where this building is located. This one is located right there. But you can see where it began and how it started moving around. Okay, what's courtyard? Okay, I've got to color the roof. Leave that uh, courtyard. And then after that, moving on to that. I need to link it. Are there, are there little uh, uh, covered areas where the, the golfers could drop off their golf bags? Where are the tennis courts? 
Where do they actually pick up their buggies? Where do they actually start to go? And then this is an examination of how the roof angles out. And then from that, I said, okay, I need to do it. And then I started doing this, right? So on, on a single sheet, you can have many, many ideas. In this one, it's an examination of the structural grid for a, a, a house that the roof of which is the most important. And then there's a stone wall underneath. If you zoom in, sorry, your resolution is really bad. You can see how that, that stone wall works with its roof and what the color is green, but what that material is, who knows? Just that it's soft and that, that the idea is that it's intended to, you know. And, and this is done in ink, you know, you don't have to use pencil, but the idea of examining what you're doing in words, in numbers, so that the proportions are examined even when you're doing a sketch, even when you don't have a ruler. Because you can tell, nine meters is so big, that is two stories. Okay, so 4.5 and 4.5. And then you can still proportion by using your eyeballs. And then you can, if you're not sure what you want, you think, okay, not so nice. I want to see what, you can do another sketch on the side of that to show what it's doing. And then maybe that's too high, what is coming in, and then you change it again. But you should be coloring your process drawings as much as you do your final drawings because they are all presentation drawings. And if you do not treat your process drawings, your working drawings like a presentation drawing, you will shortchange yourself. You will, you will not be able to understand the completeness of what you're doing. And the beautiful thing about making your working drawings, presentation drawings, your process drawings, presentation drawings, a lot of times you actually use them for your presentations, okay? So this was for a, a pro pro proposal for the uh, National Art Gallery in KL. It was a crappy project, but, and actually these were from two different projects, but I, I began to realize that this could actually, would have, would have been a better elevation for the formal part behind which then the modern parts could fit. But very, very simple boxes. But the, the, the play of roofs, the materials once again, clay, metal, and then using color to show what exactly it's all about. So a drawing as a working drawing only matters if you are still doing it as a presentation drawing, together with everything else that you need to explain it, not only to others, but to yourself, okay? Um, this is the same project, uh, plans showing uh, the dimensions of the base, um, how the entry between the two uh, of, uh, buildings are like for an engineering uh, uh, company, a big elevation and a blob, the big elevation. Sorry, I didn't need to do this. There's no, no detail you can see here anyway. But inside that building was a, a stair. Inside the main lobby, there was a library on this on one side, the only curved uh, part of the of thing. And I wanted to design a, a main stair that was oval, that was only supported by a concrete wall. And the only detail I needed to do for this to show the engineers what I wanted was this detail on the right. Because that's, that detail is the same detail all the way along that concrete wall. So in the main drawing, I just dimensioned how wide, how long that concrete wall, wall was and the fact that it had five mounting points for these brackets. And that bracket was, mount, was welded to the rebars inside. So this uh, uh, drawing sh showed exactly what I wanted. All the dimensions were there. The, the section is, 12 inches after the slope is taken into account. It's one inch thick and the whole stair is hung off of it. And this drawing was enough to produce this. So in, if you did the 3D, that's all, you know, but that just the simplicity of working from this drawing, of, well, actually from the plan to this concept drawing, to this showing the, so the wall and where it's mounted by, and then to this. It takes you through the whole story to develop that, okay? Um, sectional perspectives or sectional elevations are very important. Sometimes you leave the inside of what you're doing completely bare with just the sectional line showing because what is important is the relationship of the residents to the sidewalk outside because that sidewalk is higher by 750 from the garden and, uh, uh, and, and, the, and the sectional uh, elevation needs to be drawn in order to show that even though it's higher, it can still be a very pleasant environment provided landscaping is done properly, yeah? So once again, all that texture, uh, dots, whether they're birds, tailalat, or whatever the hell, they, or leaves blowing in the wind, you put them in, and then suddenly it takes on a feeling of, 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 of motion, of life, yeah? Um, for, that, for that project in Ceramus, there was a guardhouse I designed, and this is what, what we talk, or what I want to, you guys to get into when I talk about building sections. 
Okay, this is just a series of drawings for a bloody guardhouse. But if you understand that where you use very solid dark lines, where the concrete is poured, very dark black lines, they go all the way down to a continuous footing, and they also are contiguous with the floor slab, and they do an L shape here. So just look at this, and the fact that I did not draw a black line over the, the, rubble, well, the, the rubble work outside, makes you understand that rubble is only decorative. It's not structural. But I use that as a buffer in case a, a car was going to run into it, that they would not damage the concrete wall, they damage the rubble wall first, right? And then above, you can see louvers, which are adjustable, sitting on top of a C channel. And on top, there's another angle in order to sow how, and then there's a beam on top, the I-beam, the I-beam column, in order to support the roof edge. In front of the guardhouse, the rubble again to stop and a lot thicker. The concrete is just over there. The rubble is finished by brick inside with some plaster and then a precast concrete thing on top of which there's a timber column, a steel column holding up the structure. And how this detail wraps around the front with the same level of the C channel over here coming around the side and then glass underneath. Everything has a dimension. You can see they're all my sketches behind trying to examine what I was drawing before I drew it. And then I just drew it after that. And this was given to the contractor and the client, right? So a working drawing becomes a presentation drawing. And in school especially, this is more than acceptable, yeah? Further details, because this is just showing one condition. Further in front, there's another kind of a condition where it just becomes a beam. There's no concrete underneath. And um, I needed to, I wanted to change, oh, sorry, this is not for the same building. This is for the locker room on the other side for the guards. And I needed another detail for that. And the timber support uh, 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 clamped by brackets from the uh, C channel and a detail of the earlier, uh, an exon metric of the, of the earlier uh, over here. So this is the quality of drawing that I want you guys to get to when you start developing your building sections. May your building sections that we are going to see uh, uh, next week may not be as comprehensive as this, but it'll be wonderful for you to start taking a stab at it. So steel column, bracket, bolted into the concrete on top so that you, because you don't see it anyway, roof covering it so water will go in. And then one angle bolted to the concrete, another angle bolted to the first angle to support the, um, the uh, uh, louvers or the, uh, or the timber uh, uh, screen. Yeah. And then above, a uh, uh, steel I beam, steel uh, uh, raft, uh, steel uh, uh, joists, and then on top of that, so, uh, no, sorry, steel rafters, steel I beam rafters, and then uh, timber joists, and then after that, timber roof, and then showing how the timber ceiling has a gap between the two coming to the edge, you know. So you've got a section of a roof right there, which is a detail and a design in itself, right? And see how I, I've just added. I just added more details because more drawings needed to be done. I didn't shift another drawing. I just put it thumb all on the existing drawing so that you know no one needs to be confused. Okay. I also did once a master plan for a whole university. So this is, a, but totally different because your job is much more difficult. This was on a completely greenfield site in, in Kada and then it was uh, for miles away from Alostar. And so there's a main road making a big right angle with the north facing up. And, and uh, brought in a road, a perimeter road around the side in order to separate into, into three phases. There's the, the, the main, uh, 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 um, um, uh, the main um, uh, auditorium over there with the administration flanking it, uh, faculty streets with different faculties on either side of each faculty street. So cars cannot drive in. You get dropped off on the edge and you walk up your faculty street. Yeah, dormitories all on top of the faculties. And then sports, obviously, on one side where water is allowed to collect so they can use the water for whatever it is, sporting activities and all that. That was an existing river. And then phase two is when you have uh, um, greater amounts of car parking uh, uh, on the outside of the loop and, uh, and, and then and, and expansion, possible faculty expansion. And then finally, phase three, which shows um, the, where each faculty has their own sports facilities, um, school of School of Agriculture next to the uh, School of uh, 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 Faculty of, of Sports and Medicine and, and how everything gets developed. Now, I don't know if you want to look closer, but you can see that even the paving 
has got texture to it so that you understand that that paving is different from roof tiling and that concrete is left more or less white, whitish, but the road has got a color to it that is different from white. And you see where the trees are very, are very wild and clumped together, you see that that's secondary forest maybe. Where the trees are really organized and they've got a lot of shadow, that's where the parking is. Yeah? So even to describe parking, you don't even need to draw a parking lot. But the trees begin to tell that story for you. And look at what I've done with the spaces in between. You see the little open areas where they've got little futsal courts or little football fields? I don't know what the hell they are even, right? Some of them are tennis courts. Why are they green? They should be, uh, what doesn't matter, right? The point is, you're putting detail into something, even a channel to drain the, the, the thing from, it goes inside the street, and then you need, you know, you need some, have some walking bridges over that. It winds around and comes back out to the retention pond here, and then there's a bleed off. And then the, 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 mosque, the, the, the school mosque gets located up there, right? So, the whole idea of completeness, and I'll show you a last uh, a project where it was a memorial for a, 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 a owner of a, a big plantation. And, and the idea was that his favorite piece of land, eight acres, he wanted to do a memorial garden, which could also be used for weddings and, and family celebrations. So I designed a kind of a pavilion with a deck and a line of columns, which disappeared into the ground. The, the beginning of which you could string up tents and all that. So they could have a wedding and then it went to a pond but the important thing was, if you came here uh, for, for a funeral, there are two entrances. One is a service one where the body and the coffin gets dropped off. Prayers are said before it's buried. If you're here as a visitor, there's parking. You get out at a, at a, a welcome pavilion and you walk the journey through his favorite plantation around the edge and to end up at the chapel, right? So the drop-off area in section. So the whole journey was examined in section. So as a special studies topic, it's about the journey of arrival and how that brings you to uh, a, 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 a very favorite part of the plantation for the owner and finally ending up in the chapel by the side of the pond. So it's described as a series of sections from handicapped access goes by the service entrance. Yeah, make it easier for them. But able-bodied people walk up some steps to a, 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 a welcome thing. They walk in between the trees and they start walking around the edge of a slope of course, on one side, it's higher. So we cut the earth and we have a small ha-ha wall with some grooves and stuff. You walk around the edge to around past the columns. After you pass the columns, you get to a bit of land forming because that area there, that area there is all about um, a change of levels. There's a lot of uh, level changes to negotiate. So that's where the change of level comes in. You're walking around the edge of the pond there and there's a berm. So you can't see the pond very clearly. And finally, you end up in the, in the, which I didn't draw. But you see how even in this kind of semi-presentation drawing, there's some numbers there, plus 0 0.000, plus 9, or 0 0.900. So that level there is higher than this level, and it slopes away. Why? I don't want the water to drip over to this side. I want it to drip over back there to water the trees, but that side. And then... There's a whole series of details I drew for the columns coming up from, and all of that builds the completeness from a concept drawing or, or, a, or a site plan to a, 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 a zoom in on the, on the small plans to the sectional details to describe that journey to the, to the details themselves of the sections. Yeah. Okay, I thought it's only fair if I talk about some schoolwork. Yeah, just so you, you don't just see professional work and go, Yala, Ele, she was professional. How the hell are you supposed to do that shit? Okay, this was a project I did in school. I did this, this was my first, was the first project I ever did when I was in my first year. It was the first, in the first two months. It was the design of a house and, art and studio for an artist. There was an existing house on the site which belonged to the owner and the, 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 who is an artist. We had to measure up the entire house and then on the side of that property, we had to design a guest house as well as a studio for the same artist. So the, the, what I tried to relate them is, okay, they have separate driveways in case the, the artist has a guest and a row of trees separate them, existing trees. And I wanted the entrance of this house, to, of the new house, to kind of relate to the entrance of the old house, but it's smaller. So you can tell that, you know, uh, it's more service. The main entrance is actually over here and it comes between the studio and the, and the, and the, and the house itself. You walk into the studio, you come to a mosque garden, and then you turn left 
you go to slide foldable screens to separate between two spaces or, or make entirely one. You can slide the screens all the back to a side wall. On this side is a dining room, a kitchen, a living room, a fireplace which feeds both the master bedroom and the living room with a bathroom on the side. I didn't draw any WC or basins and stuff because I didn't know what the hell they looked like when I was still in school. And, and they, yeah, anyway. But you see the, the pavers outside, yeah, maybe not drawn the way it should be drawn. Maybe they should be closer. But the, the, the tension, washing machines, uh, uh, a laundry area, yeah, all these things matter when you start working on details. This is a zoom up on it. You see all the, all the vertical lines. What does that tell you about the finish? What is that, what is that material? Anyone? Timber. Right. So it's timber strip flooring. Looking at the drawing, you already know that. You see this area? It's different from this area, right? This area, even this grass area looks different from this. Why? Because I wanted this to be seen as a moss. And I, I thought by, by, by shading it, I could make it look lumpy and mossy like, yeah? So it's about that kind of level of detail. Okay, in another project in my undergraduate year, there was a, it was done in Rome. There were existing buildings, so the context is drawn exactly the way it is. Some are churches, others are apartment buildings. Some apartment buildings are really ugly and bland done during the 70s. Others are done during the late uh, uh, 1800s. Um, there's a corner building right at the end done in the 1750. Another one done during the late Baroque. And there was a, a American Ad Academy in that empty slot. And I, I slid my building inside. You can tell from the shadows that these on the inside are like curved maybe. And then you got tall uh, uh, windows at the lower floor. Um, the, the first floor starts at the same level as this because there's a removal from the street a bit, so there's a, a looks like there's a stair or a ramp to a front door. You'll see that the edges of these windows are lined with a different material. There's a side pink, the same way there's a pink at the, at the bottom. What does that mean? And then there's also a darker band here. What does that mean? It is the fact that the dark uh, brown is an existing building, which I did not want to demolish. And the lighter, is the, the lighter material is the new stucco that I'm building. So the stair is new, but the entrance exists. I built a new stair to access the existing entrance. I put in new windows and, and to, in order to uh, mitigate between the old and the new material, I had to put some brick edge on it. Yeah? And then everything else above is, 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 is all new. So floor plans, walking in, even a floor plan. This is done in my uh, um, third year. Even the floor plan requires that sense of modulation. What do I mean? Oops, sorry. Where the hell am I going? Okay. Oh. Okay, so walk in. There are small alcoves for, for luggage. Or, and the academy in Rome is like a place where American scholars apply, and if they get a grant, then they go and stay here for a whole year. So the front door is, there are two front doors, one that's left open most of the time, another in the vestibule in traditional Renaissance way, and there's another set of doors inside. You see the reveals I've created for the doors to fit into, and then you come into a reception area. You go to the left, there's a administration. You go to the right, it's a reception room, which takes you up into, which takes you into a, oh, sorry. Yeah, which takes you into a vestibule for a lecture theater, okay? Toilets at the end, male and female, but you walk up the main stair to the level above. You get to level above, it's a huge courtyard, and there's another stair here also for the uh, um, administration so they can access the upper level also. This is a void, you can see the cross. <clears throat> oh, sorry. These steps take you a half a level down to the uh, auditorium, these steps take you half a level up to the main, uh, the main area, yeah? So you can walk up the stair here, you come to the courtyard. On one side is a library. The library that faces east, and I've got a very thick wall with reveals so that the kind of light, sunlight that comes in is very muted. On the other side is a, is a refractory where, uh, um, um, I can't remember, it's kitchen or whatever it is. But anyway, you walk through a series of tunnels, a small gallery into the back hall where there is a series of rooms um, facing the back lane and stairs. And the upper level, you can see I did a side elevation of this, of the library on, on, on the side. So it's tilted vertically. And there are all these rooms for the fellows uh, that are going to be 
uh, studying there. A bridgeway, two different levels. This is an upper level from that, so there's a void in the courtyard. And at the highest most level, there are these smaller rooms where the fellows are allowed to go to sleep or work, whatever. Uh, Cross-section through that, shadows showing what's for recessed and what's coming out. The auditorium underneath, half level below the main courtyard, and the uh, offices of the fellows higher up and recessed away with a walkway balcony linking them and a bridge connecting them. Stairways with lit uh, lanterns on top. That's another that's a section showing one kind of condition for where the fellows work and where they live and a big balcony uniting them. Another condition where you've got um, um, uh, uh, two or more fellows living in the same thing with a group communal workspace. This one is for uh, uh, maybe a most senior fellow. They stay upstairs, they have access to the roof garden and they've got a workspace below. For my uh, fourth year, for, uh, there were two third year projects. My other third year project was for uh, a renovation of the existing architecture school at the University of Oregon. Conceptually, the architecture school is, is knocked into many different components, one across the river outside of the campus, one almost another component almost outside the campus, another one in the campus but far away, and then two more really splintered. Everything needed to be brought back to the original building. The original building was a collection of many different buildings and conceptually, the ceremonial entrance takes place off a quadrangle which is off of the main street of the campus, which is here. These are all the different quadrangles which come off of the main street and the ceremonial entrance where you invite all the guests actually come off the quadrangle. But the service entrance was actually through here, the one that people use most often. So I had to create a two faces, one service face, another ceremonial face. And I started developing it in, in a series of drawings that show columns very accurately located, even though they are, uh, they are made, done, done in charcoal pencil. But see the exploration of all the different ways of entering. The main entrance takes place uh, on the main stair and through also underneath through a, that this is actually a level above, sorry, through a thing. You can, uh, but the, the service entrance takes place on steps on either side, going to a lobby and the existing building gets converted into a main grand review room. The, the urban courtyard of the studios, looking into this crazy space where you can throw paper aeroplanes and, and models if you hate them. Uh, that section cut through there. So, you know, it's a plan, but halfway through the plan, I decided I need to draw a section. So I just drew a section to show where that was cut through. And then a smaller courtyard with the older buildings around it. Um, the, the service entrance going up the stair on either side to the, well, whatever. And then the final floor plan, showing the, the, um, the, the main uh, formal quadrangle, the existing uh, old, very really old buildings, Villard Hall around it, and how the ceremonial entrance takes place on the ground floor here. There's a courtyard cir circumambulating on the ground floor plane. So you can bring your bicycles underneath to a bicycle shed. And, um, and then the lecture, the lecture theaters on either side of it, occupying the existing buildings. And then the urban courtyard on the end. This is a blow up of the section, the quadrangle, the uh, undercroft of the entry area to the bicycle parking, the level above to show you the grand review hall, smaller review rooms above, the urban courtyard of the studios, so that from the studios you could look across the hallway to the urban, to the um, grand review hall. Sorry, this, that resolution is really bad. I, I forgot about my drawings. I didn't, I didn't um, res resolve them well enough. For my, fuck. For my thesis project, uh, I, took on, um, I took on a renovation of the uh, main library on campus. And, and the, the, the object, I want to show you in these drawings, these drawings are done at one to 200, okay? And even at one to 200, you can show detail in your elevations. These elevations were drawn on the inside of the courtyard. There are these reading rooms that stick out on the level above, uh, above the courtyard. And, um, and, and it's, it's to examine what the space of that courtyard will be like on the inside. This is on the outside, showing how the, the new building is connecting with the old building. Yeah, so there's a sense of the, the continuation of the horizontality, some bands of different kinds of brick, how I'm using windows, adding another floor above the existing building. So the new is seen with the red uh, uh, mellions, the old is seen with the timber ones. Um, different colors to demarcate different kinds of entrances. I can't even remember what that was for. But you see how these two drawings are done on the same scale, one to 200, but the, 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 the kind of ex exploration of detail 
is still there because you can uh, do uh, uh, multiple drawings on one drawing as a presentation drawing even. Yeah, this shows the, the a link that in an older scheme. And um, this was the first scheme I did where the old library is here showing how the old library is entered with the card catalog room, the old building, and the new building kept separate by means of uh, two bridgeways and a shared, uh, a, a, a very informal, very lush courtyard with the library split into two different courtyards, uh, uh, reading rooms hung out on side, the closed stacks sitting behind to back uh, to as a, as a forest of a graveyard as a backdrop, splitting them into bits so that you could actually see the forest between them. But this scheme was not, I did not do this uh, scheme for the final in the end. It was not good enough because it was too heavily weighted and from the front, the, ele the side elevation of these buildings would get in the way of the elevation of the old. And, and never mind the fact that it covered uh, the, the beautiful cemetery from the, from the town. So I got rid of that. But this was a perspective I did of the, of the uh, first scheme. And you can see where that comes from in this um, drawing here. You see this, this uh, uh, elevation treatment here? This, the, the, the perspective of the inside of this area is right here. That's it. So you see the curve of the concrete uh, vaults and how it, it transitions from circulation over to, sorry, over to the stacks. And then you go across these small bridges to the reading towers on the other side, looking into the courtyard and, and, and the books. So that when you're walking along, you see as many books as possible, uh, two, two, two levels of that. And every single drawing, these were never final drawings. They were all, some of them were even thrown away, okay? But this shows an exploration of, of a new scheme where I use the space in between the old building and the new building as the transition zone. I created a new lobby with two different stairs, elevators. And then when I blow, when you blow up this drawing, you see the patterns even of how I wanted to treat the walls, where I've got different materials on the floor um, done on the corner, how that gets drawn into the, the flooring. And then above, uh, below, right here on the other side of the floor plan of the new building, there's a veranda and how that veranda gets developed in terms of the, the finish. So that even at the scale of one to 200, I'm trying to explore how that internal lobby relates to the external um, uh, veranda. The final scheme began to look more like this, where there are two stairs, one taking you to the old wing, sorry, the old wing with a big tower on top, restrooms below the tower, another taking you to the new wing. And underneath the new wing, there's also, uh, this is the old wing, this is the new wing. Sorry, is it the other way around? I can't remember. Sorry, this is the old wing above, this is the new wing below. Yeah, I can see from the columns I designed here. So this is to the new wing, this is to the old wing. Yeah, and then the, the floor pad, flooring patterns. Oh, you've already seen this. And then the plan, uh, floor plan of the, of that, of that, the, the, the separation between the two. And then immediately next to that, the section of that, seven lanterns, sorry, the, the two lanterns here were not drawn, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lanterns representing the seven lanterns of knowledge. Um, I can't remember what I had beaming down on the floor so that you could understand symbolically real wanky, 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 wanky shit. And a wall section for that, showing uh, a, to scale and, and how thick it needs to be for, for insulation, uh, uh, louvers on top which are adjustable, um, concrete beams, which are precast in order to hold uh, concrete slabs, uh, uh, an idea of, of services and what the ceiling might be like, where it's hung from, the concrete slab, um, how I'm tying the, the, the veneer into the concrete beam, where I've got lintels and sills, which are separate from the concrete itself, uh, dots to represent rebars, ceiling edge conditions for most services, and how I'm doing a parapet wall roof with a gutter so that no water drains off the top, and no water will drain into the skylight from above. Baffles so that sunlight doesn't drip in too much. So I'd like to see your exploration about how you're dealing with uh, the section of your buildings mm -hmm. and how uh, horizontal louvers and vertical louvers can be combined to create a better kind of a, a, a light quality condition inside. If it's a library, it's not so important if it's, you know, other things. But your wall sections are very important. In another project in, in grad school, this is in an old uh, part of a, a Fez in Morocco, a clinic with an old city wall running through it. So the blow up of the plan shows 
an entrance coming between existing small shop lots. The shop lots carry in so that the, the beginning of the clinic is seen as a street coming in from the, uh, the, the, the town itself. And then you have a welcome courtyard, which signifies the main entrance to the clinic. On this side, you've got the reception, you've got a pharmacy, you've got some toilet and toilets, and you've got a stair on the outside of the city wall, taking you up to the floors above. On the inside, you've got two examination rooms around an inner courtyard and a toilet and a service, service uh, store. Floor plans are like that. Um, ground floor, you enter into the formal courtyard. You have a small waiting room, a small waiting room with another courtyard at the reception and then at the pharmacy. Uh, you walk up the stair to the level above or you go through to the inside clinic courtyard. One courtyard here for services, no, one examination room, another examination room. You see how the, all the courtyard spaces are shaded slightly differently. So even without color, you have an understanding of different materials there yeah? because what is really dark are the walls. The floor above, coming upstairs, you get a few more rooms above and then you look down to a courtyard below here. You look down to a courtyard below here. You come to a veranda and then this is where the doctor lives with an open courtyard in the middle. And then the top floor finally with more rooms. Section of that showing the innermost courtyard where the clinic is. Um, two examination rooms on the ground floor, bedrooms above, and finally living dining room above. Um, very narrow courtyards, light drips in, a small glass uh, lean-to roof, showing how light is allowed to come in without rain. Oh. An examination of the hand railing. This is how I wanted to build a hand railing for these guys here. So I, I did the drawing underneath of that, yeah? Blow up of the hand railing detail. And a 3D of the, of the clinic, the first courtyard entry, the second courtyard waiting room, the third courtyard, the clinic itself with the doctor's residence on top, and then a smaller uh, tower for the stair to come up for you to dry your laundry and, and do them and your uh, dried fish and all that. And then the idea for the roofing on the edge here, which is modern, came from the existing uh, condition of these green tiles they have all over the city. But instead of using tiles, I just use green paint to, to protect the metal. And, and so there's still some kind of recollection of what the lean-to roof does without blocking the light. In another project in, in, in another town in, in Morocco was a, a, a full-blown health center. And this shows concrete with brick and uh, section, sections showing you um, where, what is concrete and what is lined in brick. So inside, it's concrete column. Outside, it's just clad in brick to protect the concrete. And um, steel hand railings, yeah. And details of how examination rooms with sunlight coming in, because it's a lot colder in the high mountains in, in, in Fez, and, and how um, brick is used in conjunction with a, a concrete. The windows narrow because of the shape of the concrete beams, which are thicker on the edge and thinner on the middle. Um, and then the detail of how that gutter works, because I didn't want to drain the water out. I had a wall there, so I drained it into an internal gutter, which then drains out to the outside. And it becomes just a brick. That, it's like a brick, the, the, the precast, which holds the, um, the, the um, flashing and the gutter and how the, yeah, the, the skylight drains into that. Another section showing uh, a circulation condition so that light still comes in and uh, people can walk on their veranda outside, uh, sitting on the edge with a lantern and a, and a skylight coming into uh, not a courtyard, but it's a shared, shared volume, yeah? And details, this is just an examination of this showing how the concrete structure is working and how the brick is cladding around the concrete beam. Another project uh, of in, in Shuri Bangla Naga in Dhaka uh, with, with details of Lu Khan's original uh, building, which is uh, right down there. And, and this is a huge drawing, but to show the whole extent of the intervention, but you can see I've, I've blown up the top of it so you can see a section of what I wanted to do with the Lu Khan Plaza, the Lu Khan building here with a huge plaza coming up to a berm to the lake in front of it. And, um, and then on, on, on over here, blown up is the, is the um, uh, cultural uh, 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 precinct, which is below the 
Uh, anyway, I'll just go run through this. This is a blow up of that thing. But this is the master plan in the end, showing the Lucan building with a whole lot of new buildings uh, blocking the view of it so that you don't see it as a, as a, as a icon, iconic building anymore, but as part of a community. So culture, uh, uh, administration, um, uh, body, uh, uh, body and mind, uh, uh, body and mind. That's the, the College of Agriculture. A whole university is made on this end um, and a commercial district of a new city precinct with um, agricultural still happening in the big fields here. Paddy is grown in this part of Dhaka. Zooming into the Lucan, the Lucan building, the, the, the huge open plaza is now filled with a lot of buildings, a, a large plaza for riot, uh, not riots, but protests with a stair um, 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 asymmetrical to it so that where the people come in is, does not line up with the main entrance, but instead to what become, becomes a yin-yang thing between people and government. And a blow up of that, it's not even rect re rectangular because when I started drawing it, it was a process drawing, but it's supposed to be rectilinear, right? And, and the, the big plaza showing the drain points for water, showing the steps and the small flat areas where speakers can get up and just start making protests. Um, the, the lines of the corridors around the edge of that huge plaza, Lucan's building at the bottom, everything else colored in pink. And of course, because Dhaka always floods, large stairs going down to the water body so that that uh, relationship between uh, Bangladeshis and, and, the, and the constant flooding is seen. All this is an existing lake, which I didn't want to touch. I just wanted to focus on the empty piece of land in front. And then a series of final, final drawing presentations, which are done as elevations and sections. The earlier section taking on that kind of a feel, the elevation from the, from the fields, uh, the agricultural fields looking back, showing the Lucan building hidden somewhat by the new administrative center, bridge over. And details of all the, small details of all the verandas and stuff that you'd see within the complex itself, yeah? Um, what's operable, what's not, what's fixed, what allows light to come through, open space so that the heat is allowed to dissipate, um, some kind of a window functions to show how sunlight and wind is allowed out without rain coming in with a louver system, uh, a, a more detailed section showing the Lucan Plaza, how it dips down and ends up at that before it drops down to the water body over here. Some more details of that in the next drawing. Sorry, a drop off, a drop off for VIPs, what am I doing? Drop off of VIPs underneath, after which they walk up to the main level. The blow up of the towers, and the towers on either side of the, of the, of the, of the people entrance. These are exactly the same thing, but you see the difference in the examination of the awning treatment. This is permanent. I wanted to make it more uh, operable. So I, I just changed it in that. This is the permanent one, which I didn't change yet. Um, and then the details of how the operable one, which is this, works in reality. Hand railing, how the rope for that is uh, strung underneath and tied up here with a small grommet at the edge. The awning itself with a copper shade so that water doesn't dirty it and, and get uh, in the way of the workings. Blow up of how that works with the, um, the rope coming down and being strung up again on the handrail with the grommet there to tie it to above, yeah, strong details. And a perspective to show the new administrative center hiding the base of the Lucan building so that there's a, a sense of, of narrative. The concept is part of the perspective and the perspective is not only drawn to, to show off the building that you, what you've done, it's to help the, the viewer help you understand the relationship of people to governance with more people in between. <clears throat> I don't want to go ahead. Come, it's, is this the last slide? Could be the last slide. It's the last slide. Yeah, maybe. Let me, how do I get rid of, how do I skip? Oh. You're really out of the screen now. Okay. Yeah, I think it's my last slide. Yeah. Do you want to uh, do you want to talk? Ask some questions. 
Okay, Kevin, I got to leave. So I okay. leave. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks so much. Yep. Uh, Thanks, Sabrina Lisa. is hosting, so she can continue. Okay. Sure. All right, guys. Have a Bye. good one. Bye. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Bye, Lisa. So, so you see, drawing your presentation is a series of drawings that that is a whole picture. You know, if you think about the way um, you woman, you buy you buy special lipstick, you buy special fingernail polish. Sometimes you paint stuff on your fingernail. You apply eye makeup and eyeshadow. You cut your hair a certain way. You guys, when you go shopping, you buy spe special spectacles to match the shoes or you, the way you pick your jeans or your belt, you want a bag to match. It's, it's about how everything builds into a single image of who you are, right? It's about what your, you feel your identity is. Your project is no different than a human being. It has identity or it should have identity if you, if you put enough effort to develop that identity. The drawings are your way are your means of building that identity from a concept to design development to the to the plans how the plans begin to be developed in terms of flooring material texture drainage to the wall sections that begin to tell you about uh, about elevations and the features that show off how your teeth fit inside your mouth and your gums you know you are basically designing and giving character to a human being yeah, sometimes you put the two front teeth too far out. The section makes you look really weird and your lip starts protruding, right? And then you go, oh no, we can't have buck teeth. Let's move the teeth back. A building is no different. When you start drawing, you start seeing, ah, this is a bit awkward. I got to change that. And then you change it. And every time you do that drawing, if you don't try to make it a finished presentation drawing, you will not see these details and you will not know how to adjust. And then when you finally make your final presentation, and someone might look at it, uh, someone experienced and intelligent will look at it and go, okay, nice idea, but the detail is not really matching. Why the teeth are sticking out? One ear has earring, the other ear no earring. <laughs> your fingernails have got a lot of your detail, but your eyes have no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and then you look a bit naked, you know? <coughs> so it's about understanding how it all ties together, okay? And I want you to take your first step with your sections, even though you don't know what your buildings may be doing yet. But when you jump scales, when you start moving to a finer scale and doing something there, it will begin to tell you stories about the big picture that you may not have realized. Like immediately I go, okay, you guys have got to draw a building section. Kelvin is like, what the f hell? What kind of bloody building section am I doing? I got three, four different buildings. Ah, right. You finally realize you have four, three or four different buildings. Okay, maybe I'll just pick one. And then he goes, I want to pick the one hanging off the building. Okay, hanging off the building, there's no ground. I need to start drawing the section of how my building attaches to the existing building. Otherwise, it'll just fall off, right? So suddenly, just by thinking, I got to do a section, you need to make a decision about which section. By trying to make a decision about which section, you got to make a decision about how you're going to attach it to the building or how it's going to sit for coming up from the ground. Or in the case of, uh, I don't know, Kaijung, is it Kaijung? No, not Kaijung. In the case of, um, who, is, who, is, who is the fellow doing, um, not Waisin, who is doing the, the commercial crescent, the other half? Kaijung, right? Me, Me and Kai Sabrina. So it is Kaijung. I know Sabrina, you're doing it, but it's Kaijung, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is doing the student union then? Yisam. Sam. Who's doing the student union? Yisam. Oh, that's right. Yisam, that's right. Hey, Yisam disappeared. Sorry, yes. yeah, Yisam disappeared. He got bored with listening to me. I'm going over the same things too many times. So, so oh, whether it's Kaijung, all right? Trying to figure out how his building meets the edge of the water, right? Or how your building meets the edge of the pedestrian boulevard. How the lower level uh, or the, um, 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 has got maybe a five-foot way and how it connects to the lower level, how the upper level has got trees it's looking at. What are you going to do? Suddenly the section becomes very, very uh, detailed and very important, right? So I want all of you to start making steps. Draw concrete for what it is. Draw bricks for what it is. 
try to make some, some finish into it. And, and you will learn so much about what you might need to do in your ground floor plan. Okay, well, then more questions or, or maybe not, whatever. Did it make sense to you? Do you understand um, a bit more about drawings? This is a drawing, is a, a lecture about drawing having specifically to do with what your, um, what, what your issues you're facing right now. There's another uh, thing about design drawing, which is a completely different lecture. I can do that as well later, okay? So, so this is not, drawing is too complex to just handle in one lecture. But I thought this was important for your assignment next week. And also because of all the problems that the department is throwing at you, you know, building complexity, you know, these <laughs> stupid monkeys. I want you guys to understand what building complexity involves, you see? Yeah, and that's why this lecture came first, before the design drawing lecture. But we can do that next week or the week after that or whenever, yeah? Is everything okay. all right? Everything else? Any other questions? If you don't, we, 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 we can, we can just, you can just go back to your work. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Can I ask one question? Uh, sorry, my camera, my camera got problem, so I cannot show my face. It's okay. I don't want to see your face also. Because <laughs> I realize some of your projects are, uh, some of it may be a little bit to Malay style. Some of it is a little bit to Western style kind of uh, building. Does it really matter if we need to really understand the uh, background of history of different country? Can we just simply like use DOM or simply use a curve wall? No, like, you can't. You, you, all the cultures? It doesn't matter whether what you do in life, you cannot do anything simply, okay? <laughs> First of all, everything yeah. is important. And the reason why you see my projects having different styles is because, it's not because of the style, but because of what I needed to accomplish for the different contexts. The project in Bangladesh was based in Dhaka and they've got a certain way of building. There was a certain way of, 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 uh, of um, the building culture works a certain way. Uh, and the projects uh, uh, I, of, 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 that I did, showed your work in Kuala Lumpur is more Malaysian in a way, more about cross ventilation, more about um, a, a Malaysian building culture. So, so they look a bit different. The projects I did at the University of Oregon were mostly in, in, the, in temperate countries. So once again, the style is different, you see? But each way I, I tried to design with um, um, had to do with what uh, a specific context told me about those places, not what I only wanted to do. Does this make sense? Mm. So is it appropriate if a building has the Malay, uh, Malay style of ventilation, the lift up concept, but it insert a dome so that they have a courtyard in the middle, like it's a missing, missing kind of architecture. Is it appropriate? Well, it depends. What is, what are you, where are you mixing it? Are you mixing it in Malaysia? Uh, maybe. Take, take okay. Malaysia as well. Then I'll tell you the dome is not Malaysian. The dome is not even Islamic. It's Christian. Mm. And then what are you going to say about that? If you go back far enough, you will begin to understand. That's why architectural history is so important. The dome was started by the Romans. Mm. It was adopted by Christian uh, Rome, uh, uh, Roman Empire, because um, um, uh, uh, Emperor Constantine became Christian and he made everyone Christian because he started conquering Christian empires. And he realized because there were so many Christians in this, in this empire, he decided to take on Christianity as his official religion to make them happy. And then Christianity began to adopt domes. When Islam started attacking, or when Islamic and Christian uh, empires started attacking each other, every time an Islamic army conquered and, 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 and pillaged a church, they would take all the columns, turn them upside down to build a mosque. And their dome, some of the Christian churches were so beautiful, they didn't even pillage a church. They used them as mosques. They just changed the religion of the yeah. church. And then now with Malaysia, we think that the dome is Islamic. It's not. It's Christian, okay? Yes. So my question to you is, what exactly would you use a Malay, Malay, uh, Malaysian-style roof for ventilation and protection from sun with a dome for? Because a roof that is a rectilinear is very difficult to fit with a dome. They do not fit together, you see? Mm. <laughs> Unless you convert the roundness of a dome 
by means of pendentives to a square underneath. Then the roof can fit nicely uh, uh, with the square. And that, even that is a Roman invention. Yeah? And a dome collects heat. A dome does not have ventilation above. So what are you saying by you saying, I want to use the dome together with the Malay roof? Because the dome is about collecting heat. The Malay roof, kampong style roof, is about ventilating heat. So using them together is already a conflict of, uh, of a concept, isn't it? Yes. Because I'm, I'm just uh, thinking of, uh, because if I'm doing a music uh, uh, faculty, there are some Western um, elements we'll be bringing into my building. But what if I want to do some ventilation to my building, which the concept may be come from a Malay house? Okay, my question you understand is... What I'm I understand. My question is, does Western music need to worry about ventilation? Um, music, you know. <laughs> no. No. Does, yeah. does, does, does Elton John uh, need to, uh, when he's composing his songs, does he need to worry about what his <laughs> bloody house looks like? No. <laughs> he just needs to make sure that the sound uh, acoustics is fantastic, right? Mm. So just because you are bringing Mozart to Malaysia to teach students what Mozart's compositions were all about, mm -hmm. or what big band or jazz was all about, which is originally from Africa. Huh? What, what different kinds of Western genres of music is all about. Does it mean you need to have a Western building? No. No. Mm -hmm. So you're asking a question about form that is irrelevant because form mm -hmm. has got no, unless it's about acoustics, Meaning inside the hall, it has got to be very well acoustically treated, which is about form. Unless it's about that, you don't have to worry what your bloody roof looks like, right? Mm, you only design the roof to be appropriate to the conditions okay. of weather, weathering, aging, maintenance, and use in Malaysia. And to make sure water doesn't come in, right? Yes. How deep is your overhang? How steep must your roof flow uh, 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 angle? Is it, can you still use a concrete flat roof if you want to because you've got another function for that concrete flat roof? You've got to ask all those mm. questions. And if you want to do that, how do you do it then, you see? Mm. Yeah? Oh. If you're going to say, I want my roof without any overhang, because in the West, there's no overhang, there's, or there's not so much overhang, yes. and I'm using Western music. It's a stupid reason, right? Yes. Because music has got nothing to do with the shape of your roof overhead. Mm. Okay. I so anytime you get stuck, go back to what it's for. And then you'll begin to understand, actually, uh, I don't need to make any of this Western law. It's a silly thing. Yeah. <laughs> there is no, okay. Okay. Mm. Do you have any, anyone else with any other questions? No? Okay. Just to update you. Uh, Naziati, or oh, the department is having a meeting at 4.30 today. You know already? Do you know this already? No. Okay, they're having a meeting at 4.30, and I think the decision will be revealed to them at 4.30. Um, we don't know, really, we don't, Naziati and I have no idea what decision they're going to make, but I think it'll be positive, but let's see, okay? If it's not positive, we'll discuss, we'll meet again, and we'll decide what, what steps to take, Okay. Okay. All the best, guys. Okay, thank I hope you. Get something out of it. We can yeah. meet again another time. Have a good day, yeah. Bye. Thank you, Kevin. Bye. 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 Bye.